Hi, everybody. Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes. I pretty well promise you will be longer than five minutes today. And coming up tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show, we're going to do a show on this Friday night. We'll probably do a show tomorrow night, too. Uh, we'll be talking about the winter storm in the east, the new storm that will be for forming in the plains that will be moving eastward and northeastward for early next week. We'll give you everything we you need to know regards to uh, what's going to happen. And that's tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast at 7.35 p.m. Eastern Time. So let's uh, start off with uh, watches and warnings as of uh, midday today. Uh, we are seeing the first winter storm warnings that are go have gone up now for uh, a few counties in western North Carolina and also in uh, uh, western Virginia, uh, right along the I-81 corridor. Uh, so that would include cities like Roanoke and Harrisburg, uh, also up into western Maryland, uh, including Hagerstown. Winter storm watches for central and northeastern Pennsylvania, northwest New Jersey, uh, the uh, Hudson Valley up and down, uh, also the southern portions of the Adirondacks and in a small, and then extending westward into parts of central New York. Much of southern and southeastern New England, except the extreme southeastern part of New England, out around the Cape, for example. Uh, we don't have wa uh, watches up there. Also, Long Island is not in a winter storm watch. Uh, neither is uh, much of New Jersey. It's mostly uh, north and west of, of Route 78 that we see winter storm watches there. We have the first advisories up. Well, we have advisories up now with the this weather system. Uh, that is moving across the the uh, now moving across the Gulf states. So we're seeing winter weather advisories in parts of Kansas and northwestern Arkansas, and there'll be additional uh, winter storm uh, winter storm watches that'll start to and winter weather advisories that'll go up uh, at uh, some point uh, either late today or more than likely uh, some point over the weekend. Advisories up in in the eastern Dakotas and also in northeastern Minnesota because of the low that's up there. And in the west, we have winter storm warnings up in the Sierra Nevadas as well as parts of northern California uh, as more energy uh, comes in. And that's the energy from the storm for next week. So this is what the radar looks like at uh, midday today just give it a quick refresh here and you see there's uh, rain uh, and uh, even probably a thunderstorm or two in the mix here uh, from uh, Missouri on down into Louisiana and it sort of hooks back into the upper air feature that's hanging back in Kansas uh, this is the system that's going to be moving eastward and we're going to see rains spreading into the southeast in some of the mountains as far south as northeastern Georgia, there could be a freezing rain issue tonight as there is some cold air that's wedging uh, into the mountains uh, that uh, will create perhaps some icing conditions uh, in those areas. Uh, in the west, it's fairly quiet. We've got some uh, precip coming into the Pacific Northwest now, and uh, there'll be some more because uh, there's a big trough that's coming in for the Tuesday storm. We'll get to that in a second. All right, let's uh, go to the east. Uh, in the northeast. This is the probability from WPC, the Weather Prediction Center, for at least two inches. Now, from a forecasting standpoint, I always like to look at the 50% line and use that as my border for two. So uh, that would l run uh, well north and west of the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area, uh, north and west of Philadelphia, uh, just north and west of New York City, and then s straddles the coast of southern Connecticut and Rhode Island and into southeastern Massachusetts. Uh, the uh, probabilities are obviously much higher as you head to the north and west. We can jump to the probability for at least four, and we see that for northeastern Pennsylvania, northwest New Jersey, uh, the Hudson Valley, particularly north of Route 84, and then extending into Connecticut, uh, also probably mostly north of Route 84, uh, into Massachusetts and southern New Hampshire and, and southern Vermont. Uh, high probability of at least four also extends into southwestern Maine. And we'll do a quick jump to the probability for at least eight. And we have uh, some high probabilities for at least eight in uh, East Central Massachusetts and Southern Vermont, 50% probabilities for at least eight from Northeastern Pennsylvania on up through the Catskills 
and into the Hudson Valley. We don't want to leave out the folks in the West because we do have uh, the next trough and this that's coming in. It's a very strong system. And this is going to be a storm for the east on Tuesday into Wednesday. And here we also see this is the probability for at least four extending down into New Mexico and Arizona, uh, on up into western Colorado, up the Wasatch in Utah, and then continuing up into the northern Rockies, also in the Cascades and in the Sierra Nevadas uh, in the, in the, along the west coast. Uh, there we could see uh, some substantial snows as well and in the long range i'm just going to address this really quickly in the long range this is for monday into tuesday uh, high probabilities for at least three inches from the oklahoma panhandle northeastward into southern iowa and then tuesday into wednesday we're going to shift that over uh, to the great lakes uh, this thing would just kind of stay on there there you go no, it doesn't want to stay it seems to want to go back and forth but you get the there it is so uh, uh from northeastern missouri 30 to 50 percent chance for at least three higher probabilities uh, as you, you get closer to northern illinois and on up into northern michigan in the northeast it's mostly 10 to 30 percent uh the appalachians a little bit higher and uh, higher numbers as you get up into central and northern new england again that that would be uh with the tuesday storm uh, now, in terms of total liquid precipitation, because we have two storm systems here, this is the probability, uh, this is uh, liquid precip amounts, and that takes us through next Friday. So we have two events here. So between those two events, from Maine right down the East Coast to the Gulf states, we're looking at a really large area of two and a half inches or more and pockets of three inches or more of liquid. Uh, there's a little pocket there in New Jersey and into southern New England, another one in western North and South Carolina and northeast Georgia, and also from the Florida panhandle west uh, into Louisiana. This pretty well ends any drought conditions that ha have uh, been hanging on in parts of the southern mid-Atlantic and into the southeast, and it also helps the cause uh, in the Gulf states, which had a severe drought over the summertime. Inch and a half liquid amounts, and some of this is going to be snow as you go back north and west into Illinois and Indiana and down into Missouri and, of course, up into uh, western Pennsylvania and parts of upstate New York. Also, heavy precip over the next seven days in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I do have, or at least I had, let's, <laughs> I had it on the screen. I I took it down. I'm going to just show you my uh, final call snow forecast map that I put out uh, this morning. And uh, this is, uh, again, this is my forecast. Uh, you see the uh, trace line cutting across Long Island, cutting uh, through New Jersey, running through Trenton and Philadelphia, northern Delaware, and just north and west of uh, baltimore and washington i think the big cities probably see snow at the start and then uh quick changes to rain uh, might take might hang around a little longer when you get to about new york city boston's going to get into the eight inch plus zone i think uh you see where the two inch line runs from uh, central maryland on into south central and south uh, uh, south central pa east of harrisburg to reading and then to just north of New York City and along the Connecticut coast and then just go north and west of there. You got a four inch line from just west of Harrisburg, northwest of Allentown, across northwest New Jersey, uh, the Hudson Valley, uh, probably, well, probably between Route 287 and Route 84. And then cutting across Route 15 in Connecticut uh, and points northward eight inches or more north of 84 in Connecticut and in upstate New York also north of 84 and this probably this matches up somewhat with the weather service that actually went with some higher numbers I, I i decided that i was going to scale them back a little bit because i'm still kind of unsure about uh, not only how much moisture but just the amount of cold air that's around it's fairly limited uh, they have some uh, more aggressive amounts of 10 11 and 12 inches uh, from the catskills uh, northeastward uh, into the berkshires and then northeast from there into eastern massachusetts away from the coast and then on up into southern new hampshire and into southwestern maine with lower amounts 
as you go further to the north. So um, on the maps, as we'll take a look at uh, how this is playing out, we'll be able to watch two storms at once here, uh, which is uh, which is a good thing. You're going to have the new storm coming into the west, and you're going to have, of course, the storm for Saturday into Sunday in the east. Uh, I think the models have pretty well settled on this idea. Here comes the low, which by early Saturday morning is sitting right on the Florida panhandle. It sort of tracks up the east side of the Appalachians and then pops out over the uh, coast uh, near the Delmarva Peninsula. There'll be a expanding area of snow ahead of it. The hide to the northeast in Quebec is just not strong enough to wedge in the cold air, which is why you're going to see a change over near the coast and then most of the accumulating snow uh, inland. Uh, the low is off the New Jersey coast early Sunday morning. And then there's an upper feature that's going to hang it back for a few hours anyway. So there might still be some snow going on, particularly in southeastern New England sa Sunday morning as the low intensifies, passes southeast of Cape Cod, and then moves out to the east. Meanwhile, in the west uh, for uh, Saturday, you see rain and snow coming into the Pacific Northwest and dropping southwestward. You're going to get a low that's going to develop in northwest Texas uh, and headed to Oklahoma. You see snow breaking out Monday in parts of Kansas and northwest Texas and extending into Missouri. This is a fairly impressive system. It runs up to the northeast toward the Great Lakes. And here in the east, with this strong high in Quebec, the gradient is going to get very tight. We're going to have windswept soaking rains. Uh, I think we're going to see screaming south-southeast winds late Tuesday and Tuesday night, gusting to 50 miles an hour or more, and there's the heavy rain. Also, some severe weather across the Gulf states, and then on Monday and in the southeast on Tuesday, as the cold front moves on through, uh, this could be a big deal from the standpoint of uh, rainfall and melting snow in the northeast, because a lot of the snow that falls this week is going to get washed away by this. Uh, so there's a pretty good chance that we're going to have a lot of flood watches up uh, as this low approaches. And then behind it, it turns windy and somewhat colder, but not especially cold because all the cold air is still up in the northern plains and in the northern Rockies and into western Canada. And it's probably going to take a couple of more systems uh, to move along in order to bring some of that cold air through. There's another storm system that is potentially setting up for next weekend. And you know what? We'll worry about that after the first two are done because there's enough here to worry about at the moment. Well, not really worry about. I'm, I'm actually more concerned for the uh, northeast and mid-Atlantic states with the second storm because of the wind, rain, and the snow melt issue. But we'll get into all of that tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show podcast, which is going to be at 7.35 p.m. Eastern time. Mark it down. We'll see you then.